Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and back there is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. Dr. John Campbell has recently made a number of videos suggesting various conspiracy theories about the origin of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Only problem is the various conspiracy theories that he has suggested are mutually exclusive. They can't all be true. This is actually quite common amongst people who believe in conspiracy theories. They never look at the data critically. As long as there is a conspiracy, they are happy. And the more, the merrier. So let's have a look at a few of John's claims. I agree, uh, but I would have liked to have known that when I was talking to you in February and March 2020. I would like to have known that then, but it was given as absolutes in peer-reviewed scientific papers. This is, um, well, you can see I'm still struggling with it. It's, uh, and I passed, it on, I passed this on to you um, as, as the scientific word. Um, looking back, do I wish I'd questioned all these leading ex experts more? Uh, do I wish I had questioned the leading scientific journals more? At the time, it would have been unthinkable. Now, I actually feel naive for not questioning them more, for taking too much on trust. And what other things is this going to apply to is, is, is quite a... Um, it's, it's, it's actually quite... A, um, it's, it's quite alarming, potentially, actually. Now, the way that John is carrying on, you would think that these emails were some kind of a pithany, and he had previously been convinced that the virus had natural origins. In fact, over a year ago, he ran a poll on his YouTube channel asking whether his audience thought the virus was the result of a lab leak or whether it had a natural origin. And his audience overwhelmingly voted for a lab leak. From that moment onwards, he only presented reports that supported the lab leak hypothesis and ignored all studies presenting evidence for a natural zoonotic spillover. Now, what John is getting so agitated about is that a freedom of information request has revealed what everyone already knew, which is that scientists initially considered that a lab leak was a viable hypothesis. The scientists went on to investigate that hypothesis and found that it wasn't very plausible and all the evidence pointed to a zoonotic spillover. John has steadfastly been ignoring all that evidence ever since he ran his poll and realised that such evidence wouldn't appeal to his audience. And if you're interested in learning more about the latest scientific papers that point very strongly to COVID being the result of a zoonotic spillover, I have previously made a video about them and I will provide a link to it in this video's description. John, of course, doesn't accept any of this research and instead suggests a conspiracy. Professor Christian Anderson, again, the lead author, 8th of February uh, 2020, wrote in an email. Passage of SARS uh, live coronaviruses have been going on for several years, and more specifically in Wuhan under uh, BLS, uh, Biological Secure Laboratory, two conditions. Uh, now, these uh, BSL2 Laboratories are used to study moderate risk infection agents or toxins such as salmonella. Not my words, this is directly from the lead author. Serious diseases, diseases should be handled in a grade three or four lab. So serious doubts about the biosecurity of the Wuhan laboratory, considering the viruses it was handling. Basically, he's feeling it's completely inadequate, uh, but again, not mentioned in the paper. Why weren't we allowed to know this at the time in 2020? So this is the paper that John is talking about. It was correspondence published in Nature Medicine on the 17th of March, 
2020. And contrary to John's claims, they literally have a whole paragraph about the potential for a lab leak from a BSL-2 laboratory. This is what they wrote. Basic research involving passage of bat SARS-CoV-2 like coronaviruses in cell culture and or animal models has been ongoing for many years in biosafety level two laboratories across the world. And there are documented instances of laboratory escapes of SARS-CoV. We must therefore examine the possibility of an inadvertent laboratory release of SARS-CoV-2. The paper then goes on to explain why it is highly unlikely that the virus was engineered in a lab. John dismisses this explanation, but he seems to be missing the key point in his dismissal. Anyway, let's go on. Let's go on with the uh, the data that we have um, now. Serial passaging. This is is where this is where. Um, so what, what you can do in the lab is you can put the virus from one animal to another animal to another animal to another animal to another animal. You can do that a thousand times potentially. And what that does is it really mimics a natural looking evolutionary pattern. So it's kind of an accelerated evolution. It's like it's like dogs. Um, dogs weren't created in a laboratory. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> they come from wolves, but they've been selectively bred for what 20,000 years now or however long humans have had relationships with uh, dogs um, but other animals are the same um, you know um, other plants are the same we, we've selectively bred them they're still natural but they've been manipulated by humans to direct their evolution in, in a purposeful way um, and that can be done with this serial passaging um, it's much the same thing would cause the virus to contain now this is where this paper gets complicated would cause the the virus to contain o, -gly o glycans but you see the point is they, they say because don't worry what these are they, these are these are just um, sort of protein based carbohydrates in, in the virus but what what they're saying is because it contains these it couldn't have had a um, it couldn't have had a lab based origin but these could have evolved in a lab situation through this sort of accelerated evolution, exactly the same as they could in the natural, in the natural situation. So it's no argument at all. Now, John sounds quite convincing here if you haven't actually read what the paper says or don't understand it. They have considered serial passaging in an animal as a potential source, but point out that it is highly unlikely because for SARS-CoV-2 to have developed that way, the lab would have to have sourced and purified a progenitor virus with high genetic similarity and then repeatedly passaged in animals with ACE2 receptors similar to those of humans. And there is no evidence of either of these things happening. Now, of course, it is possible that the lab was keeping all this secret, but it's unlikely because scientists don't do research for the sake of it. They do it so they can publish papers and they haven't published any papers suggesting either of these things. Now, obviously, they wouldn't have published any papers afterwards if they were trying to cover up an accidental leak but there is no reason that they wouldn't have published any papers before. And also it's important to remember that this is a paper from March 2020 presenting the evidence that they had then. Since that paper was published, there's been many, many more other papers published which add more evidence to the zoonotic spillover theory. Of course, John doesn't need to read scientific papers. He knows it was a lab leak because he read it in a report from some US politicians. Now, you probably remember we looked at this state report on viral, or Senate report on viral origins, interim report uh, from the Senate uh, grouping. Um, I found this pretty convincing. The emergence of SARS coronavirus 2 that resulted in the COVID pandemic was most likely, most likely, the result of a research related incident. The thing is, though, if John is so convinced that it was a lab leak in Wuhan after reading the politician's report, 
why did he post the video I'm about to show you a few days after he posted a video about the US Senate committee report? Now, in this video, I'm going to be giving evidence, evidence that the virus was in Italy on the 3rd of September 2019. Now, the first case in Italy officially wasn't until the 30th of January 2020. So this virus was circulating way before people thought it was. Now, this has got huge implications. For example, lots of people were infected in these early stages that we didn't really know about, but very few people were diagnosed. And this gave us a very disproportionately high uh, impression of the mortality and the severe illness associated with the virus. Now, it is genuine. It, it does make you sick, but we got the numbers less than accurate, I think we could safely say. You see the problem here. If COVID leaked from a lab in Wuhan, China, it couldn't possibly have been circulating in Italy before then. If you are going to present conspiracy theories, you need to make sure they are consistent. And these two conspiracy theories are big time inconsistent. Sorry, did I say his two conspiracy theories are inconsistent? I meant his three conspiracy theories. There's another one also posted just after he had presented the findings of the US Senate committee report. Anyway, what, what they're talking about here is there's various uh, references there that you can look at. That's the Moderna website. And uh, I think this, the, these two are links to the, uh, the patent that's under question. And this is the patent in question here. Now, this patent and correctly, on uh, March 7th, 2017, uh, the actual virus, the SARS coronavirus 2 virus, which was subsequently identified on the 11th of uh, January 2020, the genome was published. But before that, these years before that, um, they'd actually put in this patent uh, part of the spike protein, um, uh, 19 nucleotides of the Moderna genome. Now, these, these uh, nucleotides, as you know, are uh, A, C, G and U. And basically what this patent did in 2017 was it had 19 of the sequences uh, in the correct order. Um, so, so that would be, for example, it could be an A, G, uh, A, C, U, um, it's, it's, it's these sequences that go, these sequences. So it got 19 of those in the right order. Um, now, is that a coincidence is the question. Um, well, there's two possibilities here. Either it was a coincidence, pure coincidence, that they got 19 of these bases right, or, or, or it wasn't a coincidence. Now, if you look at this kind of mathematically, the chances of getting the first one right there is one chance in four. Uh, and then the chances of getting that one right is another one chance in four. And that's another one chance in four. And you multiply those together. And the odds of getting it right 19 times are, are tens of billions to one. Okay, so maybe Moderna was involved in engineering the virus. Did they perhaps do a test release in Italy and then another release in Wuhan? But then we still have the problem of tying it into a lab leak from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. John really needs to choose one conspiracy and run with it. And just on the alternate conspiracies, the Italian conspiracy comes from this paper here. The authors claim to have found SARS-CoV-2 antibodies in old blood samples from asymptomatic individuals. But the test they used to detect the antibodies was a test they developed themselves and not an approved test. So it's most likely the test was cross-reacting with antibodies from other common coronaviruses. And the Moderna conspiracy comes from this study here where the authors found a match for a sequence of 19 of the 30,000 nucleotides in SARS-CoV-2. You would think if Moderna had been engineering a virus, 
they would have had a patent on a few more than 19 of the nucleotides. It actually turns out that the sequence is almost identical to that of a human protein involved in DNA repair. So there is a completely logical reason for it being in the Moderna patent, which was for a potential cancer therapy. So not only are these two conspiracy theories inconsistent with the Wuhan lab leak hypothesis and inconsistent with each other, they're also non-starters as conspiracy theories. Of course, we still have the original lab leak claim. And if you'd like more details on the latest science that shows why it's implausible, please see the video up there. Or maybe it's up there. It's in one of the corners anyway. Thank you for listening. And a special thank you to everyone who has supported me by liking and commenting on my videos. And a double special thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate it. Thank you.